Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Welcome to New Life Live. This is Larry Sonnenberg sitting in for Steve Arderun today. And I'm blessed to be here with Mylon Yurkovich. Hey, Hi. Larry, how are you? I'm doing well. And Alice, Great. Alice Benton. Hi, I'm Dr. so excited to be with you fellas. This is going to be a good day, I can tell. Mm. We're going to be here for two hours, so give us a call at 800-229-3000, and we'll answer some questions for you. Um, I just wanted to talk about a couple things. One is our matching gift. Mm. How's that coming? Challenge. Well, you know, our challenge was $324,000, and as of this morning, we've raised $356,000. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And last week when we met it, um, we, made the, <laughs> we made the decision that whatever we're over, we're going to go out and seek and let people know what we need from somebody to match the overmatch. Mm. So right now, we're at $32,000, and I'm kind of shaking in my boots because <laughs> I got to figure out, or I don't have to figure out. I'm just pr waiting for God to reveal how He's going to do that. This feels like higher math to me. Yeah. And I have a recessive <laughs> matching. So, so what you're saying is, what is over the <laughs> match, you're going to seek a second matching gift for that. You're right. Wow. But but right. it is higher math because this is some supernatural math going on here, where God has shown up through you listeners in miraculous ways. He does yeah. more than we could ever ask for or imagine. And here he is again. That's a great, nice job. great That's way great. to put it because when we put the match out, uh, Dave was in last week one day and he said, I was skeptical. I, I just, <laughs> you know, I said, Dave, I never thought I'd say this to you, but ye have little faith. <laughs> 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 but um, it was a little, it was a little like, okay, here you go. Come on, listeners. And you and, listeners have yeah. really stepped up, and we still have a few days left. So if you want to have your money matched, uh, doubled, make a gift, and uh, just designate it for the match. So we're trying to do this by the end of July. The end of July, Okay, yes. so we have two more days for that. Three days, actually. Three days, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. That is exciting. It's, it's good things. And uh, God is just the God that multiplies things. You know, think of the fishes and the loaves. Well, I, I, I think we also have to stop and say what a wonderful thanks and gift whoever decided to give the mm -hmm. matching portion of the gift. That's wow, right. whoever that was or those people, those people that did that, what a generous offering. Yeah, yeah. amen to that. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to say before we go to the phones is uh, there's a movie coming out August 23rd. It's called The, the Overcomer or Overcomer. And uh, I was blessed to see a preview of that, and I want to encourage our listeners to go see that. It is a really good movie. It's uh, the theme of the movie mixes faith and humor and a lot of heart. It's got a great story. There's a twist that, in the story that you don't see coming, and it leaves you with hope, and it's inspirational. Uh, the Kendrick brothers did the movie, and it's they're the folks that did Facing the Giants, Fireproof, Courageous, and then War Room. And so uh, it's about a high school coach and the, the, the business in town that employed everybody closes up. And so all the families are leaving and this uh, basketball coach is left without a team. And the uh, principal comes in and says, I want you to be the uh, coach for the cross country team. And it's very, it's kind of comical because he has nothing to do with running, doesn't want to do it. And uh, the person that comes out for the team is a, a, a girl, an individual, and she has asthma. Mm. And But it's a beautiful story. I saw the previews for this, yeah. and it looked really good. Go to newlife.com. We have a banner about this movie, or go to You Heard It on the Radio. Click on that, and you can go see a trailer. But I just want to encourage you. It's a movie you'd be happy to see and happy to take someone with you. We'll come back and go to the phones right after this. God pulled me out of the gutter of my life that I was living in. I have done a lot of work over the last 40 years, 
This is the first time I've ever felt love. I've had such a wonderful... Coming to Dallas, Texas, 22nd. We're going to talk about forgiveness and codependency. We're going to understand that family of origin, the unhealthy reactions to it. We're going to talk about the cycle of shame and surrender and developing the plan that moves us forward. There'll be eight teaching sessions and six small group sessions. To register or to learn more about the Finding Freedom Workshop, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. I am living a new life and I believe that I have the resources and tools to continue that. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, we're back. Um, you know that lead in there mentioned the resources available on this program. And I neg neglected to say, if you make a gift, uh, yet this month we will send you Don Townsend's new book, People Fuel. And uh, it's it's really a good book. John's going to be on tomorrow on live. So if you're listening in, um, come back tomorrow, you'll hear John. Uh, let's see. The other thing I wanted to say is we are going to be talking a lot about Club New Life again now that we have this match all about wrapped up. Uh, Club New Life, monthly giving, $30 or more a month. We have a great thank you gift. It's called The Best of the Best. There are eight books. If you join, you get each of these books. Healing is a Choice, Changes That Heal, Boundaries, Forgiving What You Never Forget, How We Love, Secrets Women Keep, Every Man's Battle, Intimate Deception. And that pretty much covers... Uh, well, every, all the radio hosts who have authored books at this point, Sherry Keffer, Steve Arterburn, Joe Hubbard, Mylon Yurkovich, Dave Stoop, John Townsend, Henry Cloud. So give us a call. There are other benefits to joining the club we'll talk about another time, but we want to go to the phones. So let's talk to Sally on line one. Sally's in Philadelphia. WFIL is the station. Sally, how can we help you? Hi, all. Thanks for taking my call today. I've been listening to you guys for years. Mm. I've actually gotten a counselor from there, helped me very much, and this is the first time I've ever called, and I'm the first call you're taking today. This <laughs> must be God appointed. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys have also inspired me to become a Christian counselor. I'm on my way to graduate school. Oh, this is the same. Right. Um, however, I'm calling with very, very big struggles of my own. Um, this, uh, I'll, I'll try and short amount of time that we have to give you just a brief a summary with the most information um i've been married for three years i've been in my 40s uh, this is my first marriage i was a single mom for 22 years so very much set in my ways and and brought a lot of hurt to the relationship my husband is also bringing a lot of hurt into the relationship we've both been about saved for about 20 something years but we're still carrying around a lot of baggage i think i've developed a hardened heart um i've become an angry person um and uh, I relate a lot to Joyce Meyer, and when she gives her testimony regarding her early years with Dave, I don't know if you guys have heard her testimony, mm -hmm. but I relate a lot to her. And I said, well, if God can do that with her, he can definitely do that with me. Um, however, I am seeing a Christian counselor now. Um, we're working through a workbook um, called Breaking Every Stinking Chain, and um, I feel like uh, I'm a seed, and when you plant the seed in the ground to grow, as soon as it sprouts, the irritation comes to squash that little sprout down and I never get to grow because the irritation is there and the irritation at this point is my husband. Um, we're all about good guy. Well, I think with another woman, he would be great, but I don't know if with me. Um, uh, if I could put our descriptions into biblical terms. Sally. I'm the one with... Sally. Uh, yes. Um, yes. Thank you. I think that's a really good description of what's going on in your relationship. And this is one of the laws of attachment theory or attachment research. That is, when we get close to someone in a primary relationship, they become the lightning rod for historical anger yeah. inside of us. Mm -hmm. So if you were to look behind over your shoulder and look to the past and uh, pretend you're looking 
in the rear view mirror, who would you be angry at? Hmm. Um, a lot, well, I think a lot of people, I'm angry at people I don't even know, people that do things like that hurt other people. Right, but, um, it, but, but you see, Sally, it's because you've been hurt in a similar way. True. And, and at this point, I've made I've made vows that I'll never let another man hurt me like that again. Well, but you see, the issue the issue is is that then any time your husband gets close, boom, all of that history comes out at him. He's catching all the right. history of your anger, which really isn't fair. The infraction and the reaction don't match. Now, this is extremely oh. this is extremely common, and this is again comes from the field of attachment research, which is what our book, How We Love, is all about. And if you're not working with your past, you're never going to be able to t conquer this because this is an issue of the past. It's an issue of how you've been hurt in the past, and things were just not fair. You were hurt and you were harmed. It was unjust mm -hmm. and it was painful. And if anybody gets close to stepping on that thin ice, boom. They catch the I whole play. history. So it's really important to do historical work with somebody who understands trauma and the history of how trauma builds up inside of us to create a tremendously big charge of energy on the inside. And all somebody has to do is come mm -hmm. along and touch us, and boom. Alice, what would you say from that point? I want to add, Sally, some things that you might be able to do with your husband to start cutting this off at the pass and getting to that deeper need you have that's underneath the irritation that myelin is helping you to identify. So I, I want to share that personally, Sally. I've had to work through similar irritation in my own relationship that would come out at my husband and at my children, even though they weren't the, the perpetrators in my life either. So I used to try to pretend that I wasn't irritated and I would hide it and try to stuff it down and get busy cleaning, doing something. And my irritation would only grow at everybody around me. So actually through a lot of work on Mylan's comfort circle, which I'm just a huge fan of, I learned that I had to start recognizing early on that I was irritated and not try to hide it, but confess it to my husband and my children as quickly as I could. Folks, I'm irritated about something. I don't even know what it is, but I'm confessing to you because by my confession, God's grace was able to flood the situation. Mm -hmm. Then my husband had to become a better listener through the comfort circle steps. So when I confess to him, I need to tell him, now would you listen to me? Would you do the comfort circle and listen to me? And as he gave me that time and space, it would help me come up with my need. Whether it's I need a nap, I need a cry, I need some time off, I need a foot rub from you, whatever it is. Over time, practicing those things in addition to the historical trauma work Mylan was suggesting works miracles. I'm so much less irritated now, and I know better how to take care of it faster. And my husband's better equipped. He's not playing the guessing game with me anymore. So Can I interject a little bit here? Thank you for um, that. And I am, I am starting to work with my own counselor regarding the trauma. First, I didn't think I had trauma in my past because I was never like sexually abused or physically abused. Mm -hmm. But she said trauma comes in different ways. So that's, I'm like, okay, I think I maybe have been traumatized. So we're working on that. Good. Um, at this point, you know, the, the space that you're talking about, that your husband gave you, uh, your, you know, to breathe. At that point, we have, Dr. Steve uh, has told him, you know, when she gets like that and you guys are at that point, walk away, get in your car, go to a hotel room for a night, and he will not get out of my face. He won't get out of my face. And at that point, I just want to escape. I need him to uh, get out of my face because he's pushing me and he's pushing me and he's threatening me. I feel cornered at that point and I feel threatened at that point and then I explode and I start to physically lash out to the point that I end up hurting myself. I'm like, actually sitting in the parking lot of an urgent care to check my arm because I may have a hairline fracture from last night. That's how this is gotten because he won't walk away. Sally, Sally, only, who ugly? Then he's I'm sorry. Then he's I'm sorry about that. Sally, who who cornered you in the past? Who trapped you? Who who held you captive? I feel like I've been held captive by my own 
the, the, the requirements that people have placed on me, like by my own parents, I was the oldest of three children, the only girl. I had to be the adult in the, in, in, in the mm-hmm. family dynamic right. all the time. Right, right, right. My, my parents were too immature right. to raise three darn kids. Right. And they never made the right decision. And I was always held on a darn pedestal to, to, to fulfill everybody else's dream. Yep. And I, I, I just feel so pressured. The pressures of life are choking every seed that lands on this hard ground. And I can't seem to grow in Christ, which is what I want to do. S- Sally, it's going to involve grieving the past and doing some very hard work right here. You know, as one of our co-hosts uh, says, uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Joe Hubbard. I'll, I'll, no, no, I'll, I'll get it in a second. If it's hysterical, it's historical. And when we, uh, Sherry, Sherry, uh, pet Dr. Sherry, when she says that, it, it, if it's hysterical, it is historical. And what you're doing is you're getting revved up and ramped up to a dysregulated place that is not about your husband, but he has brokenness and weakness too. This isn't purely a uni- unilateral thing. The two of you are creating a core pattern, and and your therapist is right. He needs to be able to walk away or just be quiet and not react and compound the situation. And so I see that in my office all the time. It's a learned skill to learn not to aggravate and add fuel to the fire. But he has issues too, and he has to work on that himself. You already said it. He brought stuff to the wet marriage. You brought stuff to the marriage. And the Apostle Paul tells us to put off the old man, the hurt one, the hurt little parentified child one, and to get angry at the correct source, which is not the present, but it's the past. But if things are at that level of threats Mm -hmm. and physical violence, and he's not willing to step down, then it's sounding fairly urgent for you to insist that he go to that counseling with you for some couple sessions. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not a safe environment and you're at the urgent care, that's a very serious level. And so I want you to take that back to your therapist. She Mm -hmm. sounds like she's on top of a lot of things with you and really helping you through. I think there are some urgent couple sessions that need to happen to safety plan to evaluate how dangerous the situation might be because you may need to limit your exposure to him in order to protect your heart and your body and and to protect him from your anger too sally we're going to send you a copy of uh, how we love uh, the comfort circle that alice was talking about is described there very well and the attachment uh, theory that mylan and Kay have mm. uh, laid out so beautifully is in there so i hope that will be helpful and i appreciate your call Let's go and talk to Jasmine. She's KKLA here in L.A. She uh, lives in Santa Barbara. Hi, Jasmine. How can we help you? Are you there? Okay, let's go and talk to Cindy. We'll see if we can come back to Jasmine. Hello, Cindy. Nashville, Tennessee. You listen online. How can we help you? Hi. Hi. Yes, I just... um need some help or guidance. <clears throat> My husband had asked me for a divorce. And mm. We have been, you know, going through this several times. And um, last time we were, <clears throat> we were, we were separated and um, he, it was an emotional affair on his part. And, and here lately <clears throat> we've been distant just like roommates. We've been hateful with them. Um, we have two children, um, 15 and 13. How long have you been married? We've been um, um, 17 years. Okay. I've been again, 18, got married young. Um, and right away we had children. We didn't even, I mean, I knew his family. I'm best friends with his sister since we were like 10 years old. And, you know, it, but I never knew, knew him on that level. But um, we just we just happened. We just got married young, and we had two miscarriages before we had our Aww. um our daughter. And um, and, and Cindy, would you would you yeah. tell us what what kind of help have you two gotten up to this point? It's been a very rocky mm-hmm. road, and you've gone through some painful <laughs> times in your marriage. Um. And then I asked him if we could go talk to a preacher or talk to um, counseling. He will not. He won't. He won't go. 
And, and, and Cindy, um, Cindy, Cindy why, him. why does that stop you from going, if it does? What? I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know why I haven't on my own. I've asked friends and family, what should I do? And, of course, they're, you know... Oh, so you so I'm, I'm going to jump in with a question. What are you afraid mm-hmm. will happen if you go into your own counseling? I don't, I don't know why I fear that. I don't, I don't, I guess, I think I could do it on my own and... And, and, and try to finish this sentence for me. I'm afraid that what will happen. I'm afraid that what? Fill it in. Cindy, think about that. We're going to go to a break, and then we'll come back. Okay. We'll, we'll think about how filling in that blank for Alice, and we'll start there when we come back. You're listening to New Life Live with uh, Mylon Yurkovich and Alice Menton. We're going to be here for two hours, 800-229-3000. Give us a call. We'll be right back and finish up with Cindy. My wife had found me out through my past and my sexual addiction since I was a small child. It really gave me the opportunity to start digging into my past, start digging into my childhood, figure out what was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. Every Man's Battle will really give you that opportunity because all the guys there in that room are there for the exact same reason you're there. I don't want to be the reason that my kids are going to counseling. I don't want to be the reason that they begin to struggle with the same issues that I'm struggling with, and I've got to put an end to this. Yes, you can be different. God does love you. You can be forgiven for this, and there's a way out of this. But you have to acknowledge that you have to change, and that there's a problem. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to hand down something to another generation that just looks like pain and destruction. You can hand down redemption, but you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1 800 639 5433. It's 1 800 New Life. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, welcome back. We're talking with Cindy, and uh, Alice posed a question. It was, what would you be fearful of yes. if you went to counseling? Yes. So, Cindy, what do you think? I think that, you know, uh, would it would be in this, uh, just keep me in the... Like same cycle, like it wouldn't wouldn't go anywhere because every time I would try to help or talk to him about us in any kind of way or our children, he ignores me or he calls me stupid or I'm being stupid, I'm being silly. Um, so, Cindy, you're afraid that counseling will keep you stuck. Yes, like it would just it would just like even if I go and tell him what I've learned or what things we could do, he would just call it stupid or being silly. Yeah, he put he put you down for that. for that as he has for many things that you've done and that you've tried. Could, could it be the bigger fear is that there might be an end to a relationship that you're f- afraid to deal with or face? Right, maybe it's right. I'm sure. Yeah. And, and you're you're at, you're at a crossroads. It sounds like as your husband is as, actively asking for a divorce, and I'm so sorry you're in that position with two young children. Mm-hmm. And we hear the fear and the sadness in your voice. Mm-hmm. How do you how what do you want from us today? Would you pose your question for us? I was just looking for should I should I even try to make this work? And then you know if it's not going to go anywhere, 
or should I just let him go? You know, Sally, I'm, Cin- I'm sorry, it's Cindy. Cindy, here's the deal. Mm-hmm. The, the reason you'd be going to counseling isn't, as Alice was saying, necessarily for the relationship. It's for you. It's for your ability yeah. to be strong, to think through your issues, to decide how and where you need to be protected, uh, to decide yeah. what steps as an adult I need to take to keep myself and my children safe. Uh, your husband is uncooperative, and we tell everybody on this show and everywhere we go, if your spouse is unwilling to grow, then you choose to grow. You choose to become that man or woman that God wants you to be. So therapy or counseling helps us learn to grow up. And so it would be for you, Cindy, to grow and to mature. And that's where she would learn how to make the de- right decision. And then she would yeah. learn more then as she f- understands her history, her background, and uh, mm-hmm. what the issues are greater strength to be able to in the future to make her own decisions it's not about her husband's reaction to the counseling it's about her choosing to be healthy and then we'll see what happens and maybe he'll come around what else would you say larry or alice but I do think you'll need to brace yourself because it sounds like your husband will be upset with you what whatever yep. you do. Mm-hmm. But I think God is yeah. inviting you into strengthening some muscles. Mm-hmm. I wonder if a lot of life feels scary and overwhelming and if you feel young sometimes on the inside. And I think your children, you, your marriage, they all need you to develop your, your voice, to have a stronger, more certain voice. That's hard for all of us to do, but God calls all of us into that growth. And it will benefit you and your children no matter what your husband decides to do. Cindy, thank you for calling us, and I hope that you'll go see a counselor. If you hold on, the call screener can uh, connect you with someone who can help you find one, hopefully right there in the Nashville area. Um. And, and Cindy, it took courage to make this call for mm. all of you that are waiting on hold, all of you considering calling. It's scary to call in and reveal yourself to us in the world, and it's brave, and God can come right in through that to meet you where you are and to help you move into the person he created you to be. Mm. What book you think? Changes That Heal, would that be a good one, or is there a better book? I, I think Steve's book. Um, Take Your Life Back. Take Your Life Back right. is a great book for We're, we're going to send that to you, Cindy. It's about putting the pieces together and not having somebody else control the puppet strings. Love it. I love the picture on the I front of this too. book. I do, too. That's what you said. That yeah. That's what I was thinking of. Okay, we're going to go back to Jasmine. Jasmine's listening from Santa Barbara on KKLA. Hello, Jasmine. How can we help you? Hi. Hi. Um, thank you for taking my call. Um, I've actually spoke to you in the past once before, and um, my story is I have PTSD, and it's what they call complex PTSD, and it's um, as a result of like childhood adverse experiences, and um, I have done very well in my life. I actually have just come upon a year and a half of sobriety. Which is amazing. Way to go, Jasmine. Jasmine. We're so proud of you. Wow. (laughs) My addiction spans both sides of my family. Okay. So I'm like so proud of myself. And and I want to protect that because it didn't come easily. No, it didn't. And I'm proud of you for working so hard to get there, Jasmine. Thank you. Way to go. Um, So. Typically, I manage myself very well, um, but something's come up that's been a big trigger for me in the past, and I'm scared, and I don't know how to do it. What is that? Um, so I was, I was summoned for jury duty, and the first time I went, like, my employer covers the, um, uh, the day or whatever they pay you to go. There's not the money. Like, the first time I just went, I was just kind of like, okay, well... I wasn't expecting anything or, you know, I didn't, it was just kind of like, okay, well, here, I'll go do this thing, whatever, I'm getting paid. And then when I was there, I was just like, (laughs) struggling so much. And um, so I just don't know what to do. I don't, the the following times that I had gone, it was a repeat. It was just horrible, like to the point where I had my Bible with me and I was just pulling out Bible verses, like writing them over and over. And I explained to them. I mean, I finally learned that I could do a sidebar because 
prior to that, I would have to explain myself in front of people. Okay, Jen, yeah. we have to go to a break, but we're going to come back and talk with you right after this. Wow. Well. Thank you. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against. And families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, we're back. And uh, Mylon, you have a couple things I think you want to say to Jasmine. Well, Jas- Jasmine, I-, I-, I am so sorry that um, you're experiencing ex- the, you know, this. And I really get why you're getting triggered because... Um, there's something called an ACE score, Adverse Childhood Experience Score. And if a child has had a very high number on a scale of 1 to 10, that means they've been traumatized and have witnessed a lot of abuse, um, addictions, pain. They themselves have been hurt and harmed. And with high ACE scores, when you walk into adulthood, it's not a normal adulthood. You've worked so hard to rid yourself so well of your own addictions, which are to cover up the pain, but to walk into a jury, into a courtroom with all these people and somebody's in trouble and to have people looking at you and asking you questions would most certainly be a trigger. And it's most understandable why you feel that way, Jasmine. And I just want to validate that to you. It makes total sense. Thank you. You're welcome. So what can she do from here, knowing that she has to go and do that, go and be a part of the? I I should say I um I I'm, I'm working with my doctor to see about because if it sometimes you're covered under medical excuse or something, um, but just if if it, that does if that if I still have to go, like how do I protect my sobriety? Like how do I make sure this doesn't impact me? Hmm. Because what happens sometimes is like a disassociative state. Yes. And a lot of the times when I would be left, it was like I didn't even remember. <laughs> you know, I didn't even remember starting to drink. Yes. I didn't even remember like the first drink. And then it would just progress. Mm-hmm. 
Jasmine, you're already on the right path to garner the protection and the strength that you'll need if you if you do have to go through with this because you're already looking ahead you're playing out the possible tape of what could happen and that's essential to maintain your sobriety and you're reaching out for support by calling us additionally you know to go to the bible and you know that the verses especially about anxiety and about god's provision those are weapons to use to fight against the enemy to fight against the spirit of fear and so i want to make sure that people in your life that know you and love you are aware of what's happening they're aware of your concerns and i want you to request prayer and check in from them all around this time so uh it, we call it book ending where you set up check-ins before and after this difficult event the jury duty that you need to go through and then i want you and the people that love you the believers that love you to bind that spirit of fear in the name of jesus cast it out loose it from assignment and then cover yourself with those ongoing bible verses those are great weapons to use against this fear in this situation jasmine um I think one other thing she's going to need, and we, we cannot ever forget the spiritual, prayerful, spiritual opposition element. We must never forget that. But we need, throughout our lives, we need advocates. Yeah. We need partners. Community. We need friends. We need community. We need the support of somebody to walk with me there, somebody mm -hmm. to sit with me, somebody to help uh, when I dissociate and she's because she mentioned dissociation and people with high a scores often have dissociative mm. um, experiences within their childhood which, which is a something the brain does to escape the abuse that a person is in and if she finds herself dissociating of course alcohol makes the pain go away which is why people turn to addictions she needs a support base she yeah. needs that doctor's letter she needs advocacy to help get her out of that because this is a highly triggering situation yeah. for her. And Mylan, you made it okay for me with the way you've talked about medication to seek medication as well, to mm -hmm. seek a psychiatrist mm -hmm. and that's really helped me with my own anxiety mm -hmm. and I've needed that for times in my life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What can we send Jasmine that might help her in terms of a book? I would say changes that heal. Changes you mentioned that, that earlier okay. on the show. Um, and I think it talks about the essential developmental elements that we all need to accomplish in order to mature. One is learning to bond well. The other is after we've learned to bond, to be able to separate and tolerate separating from others. Mm -hmm. Learning to integrate good and bad and also to become an adult by being able to be in reciprocal relationships of people and not automatically in an over-under relationship. Okay, that's on its it, way. It was one of the most brilliant things Henry ever wrote in 1987, 86. Wow. And it continues to be just a, a yeah, great, great, a great book. Yeah, it is a great book. Okay, well, um, we're going to take another call before I do. I just want to encourage, if, if you're having issues like any of our callers that you're hearing, or if you have anger, fear, grief, codependency issues, anxiety, stuck, just call 800 New Life, 639 5433. And the folks there are ready to help you find a resource, find a counselor, uh, find a workshop, uh, pray with you, whatever they can do to help you get on track to live the life that God wants you to live. So let's go and let's talk to, let's talk to Rose, Pasadena, California. This is on KKLA. Hello, Rose. How can we help you? Hi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, good morning. I have security and trust issues as far as with transportation. Well, many things in my life, but my question today pertains to transportation as far as getting myself to counseling to get to EMDR for panic disorder. Um, I want to get back to work. You know, I want to carry on with my life. Right now, I'm just merely existing. I'm not really living life to true abundance. And um, I don't know what to do at this point. I can't take Uber and Lyft because I don't feel secure getting in the car with a stranger. And I don't have support, you know, people in my life to support me as far as going along with me or riding along. I can drive locally if I do have someone with me that I trust, 
um, I just can't drive alone, and that's what I'm dealing with, the uh, alone thing. I have, like, a phobia of being alone, mm-hmm. and I think because I have a lack of support in my life. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> my question is, how do I mean? I don't know. I mean, consider maybe that talk therapy by the phone. I don't know if that works, but I'm, I'm running out of options, and I just wanted to get your help. It's a great question, Rose. Rose, I'm a big fan of doing therapy over the phone, over Skype, FaceTime. I meet with a lot of my clients no. that way. Yes, and some of them for the very same reasons that you're describing. And so our goal is to only temporarily meet that way to help build up their strength and ability to then come into the office. So there there are a good number of clinicians who are willing to work that way and, and meet you there on your in your home through what they call telehealth, telehealth counseling. And, uh-huh. and Rose, okay. your story is very common. It's important for you to know that. And I appreciate yeah. that you use the words anxiety and panic disorder because, in fact, agoraphobia or something that keeps us hesitant to walk out into the marketplace, which is what that word means, and where we constrict and restrict ourselves to smaller safe zones, which in some cases is my house, and I can't even leave my house for some people, um, it's common. And there are several things that can really help that. Um, One, as um, we just heard, which is to do some work with somebody over the phone that can love you and identify with what is going on. Alice shared that with you. Secondly, the right medications can help to reduce the amount of anxiety we have on the inside. Um, And uh, a meeting with a physician to help you establish which one would be best is a great idea. And then ultimately, a desensitization program that makes us a little bit more brave daily, step by step, with somebody holding our hand as we move out into the world more robustly. Um, it's It's gonna be a group of things that we do. And then the final one would be to learn to build friendships so that I have people with me and I'm not so isolated, which is a part of the symptomology of what, or, or the symptoms of what you're doing here in terms of restriction and constriction. It's common. This isn't rare. This is something that a lot of people know a lot about, and you happen to be in a great area with lots of resources. So um, I just really appreciate your call. I would say it's really common, wouldn't you, Alice? Definitely. Yeah. And and you made me think, Mylan, I think churches are a great place to Absolutely. start to build support mm-hmm. and to have more safe people than in your life who are available to you and whom you can trust. Mm-hmm. So many churches have small groups, life groups that are, are free. You don't have to pay anything for them. And you build up what, you, what you're lacking on your own. Mm-hmm. Rose, uh, let's send Rose take your life back. That's a great idea. I think that might be helpful to you. And uh, we'll just look forward to you calling back one day and telling us how how well things are going and how much uh, this call helped you. Um, We're going to come back, take another call. I want to encourage you to call us at 800-229-3000. We're going to be here another hour. And we'd love, I know Alice and Mylon are just, can't wait to help you. I came into this thinking that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Columbus, Ohio, October 25th to the 27th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylon and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. Here at this workshop, we had our first first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. 
Last year after every man's battle, I was so moved by the transformation that I saw, not only in myself, but in the guys in our small group and the other people that were there and the stories that I heard that I decided to go ahead and join Club New Life as a contributor to that. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Because we're doing God's work here, you're restoring marriages, you're giving people hope. It's just been such a blessing to me, and I just wanted to encourage you all. When you see something good that God's doing, just jump on that and help support that. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433. Give your support to them if you can, and, and just help them do what God's doing here in the, in the world. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, we're back. And before we go to our final caller this hour, I want to, I always love for people to, that we ask to support us, to sense the reason why we ask that. And this was, I think I maybe have read this one in the past, but I want to read it again. It was a uh, something that one of the Every Man's Battle attendees wrote at the conclusion of uh, that workshop. Mm -hmm. He said, I was optimistic entering the workshop. However, I gave myself every excuse why I couldn't go. I didn't have the finances. I can't take time off work. I don't need more people telling me things I already know. But I had men in leadership roles tell me I need it. So I came, putting my faith in others that know more. This workshop has broken me down allowed me to expose myself, exposure I didn't believe or know I had, knew I had. But the second half of the workshop showed me how to heal, showed me there is hope, showed me God's plan is larger, greater, and more loving than mine. And I love that, because what, what good is life if we don't have hope? And that kind of humble spiritual exposure, when we reveal our dark, secret, shameful, embarrassing places, Oh, God's power works mighty change in us when we're loved well and accepted right in that space as we are. We begin to become somebody we've never been before. Mm -hmm. So I also want to read that because we have a, a, a workshop coming up in Sacramento uh, it's in uh, August. And I want you men to think about attending that. Call us at 800-NEW-LIFE, 639 and just ask about that workshop, and we'd like to get you there. Larry, could I ask you a question about that workshop? Certainly. Um, it, it is for people that men that struggle with controlling their sexuality, and mm -hmm. it could be in many directions. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we think it's just people struggling with porn, but mm -hmm. there's people who are having serial affairs or people who struggle with other aspects of trying to bring their sexuality into a controlled zone uh, that God approves of. Right. Would you add anything to that? I think the only thing I would add to that is that it, the, the connection we want you to make is with God, self, and others. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, part, we want the, the connection with God is such a big deal because so many men come to that workshop thinking, God's left, I'm out of the shadow of his care and his love. And I'm just going to have to live this way. Mm -hmm. And they discover it's other than that. And there's we, we don't want the guys to compare, well, all you did was have one affair, or all you did was look at porn and you got caught. Whatever it is, it's a matter of the heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we want to help men with that, whatever it is. Good. I just wanted to clarify yeah. that because I think sometimes it gets – kind of narrowly you know pigeonholed yeah, into just a porn, porn problem right. and it's far more than that it's it's as steve says and and fred say in the beginning of every man's battle it's what do you do when you see somebody walking in front of you it steve tells the story of being in his car right and somebody walks what do you do with yourself right then right. and so it is about the incorrect directions of our sexuality and learning to harness that so Thank you. You're welcome. Let's talk to Teresa. And before we do, I just want to remind you, we're going to be here another hour, 800-229-3000. Teresa in New York, New York, listens online. How can we help you, Teresa? Hey. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. I really appreciate it. And sure. thank you for what you're doing. 
I have a situation. I have a daughter who is 37 years old. I was 17 when I uh, when I had her, and I have uh, two children from uh, another marriage. My 18 year old uh, about a year ago told me that she is um, a gay. I am a committed Christian. I love the Lord. I serve the Lord. I am in ministry. And when she first told me that, I encouraged her not to label herself. She was too young to put those labels on her, but uh, to just, um, you know, just to, to not basically encourage her not to label herself. And I, I got that from Focus on the Family. I went mm-hmm. on their website, tried to learn how I could handle this, and that's what I, I learned from that. Now, my 37-year-old daughter knew Uh, about this young woman that was in school with her. And I actually invited her to go on vacation with us because I did not know, but my oldest daughter knew and would not tell me because she wanted to be friends with my my middle daughter. And I was very upset about that. Uh, I really blamed her because it it got as far as it did, and even in my own home, not knowing. Uh, And I think she had a responsibility. But then the, the issue here is that my 18-year-old is going off to college this year, and we've encouraged her to stay close to home, you know, uh, just go to a tech school. We have a really nice cottage in the back. You can have the cottage. Okay, you can have your privacy if that's what you want. Teresa, we're, we're a little short on time. Yeah, tell us your question, please. Well, I, how do I... Not having a good relationship with my daughters, either one of them. And how do I stop my oldest daughter from interfering mm-hmm. so much? Okay. Because the, the thing is, is she's paying for my daughter to go to this college. We're paying for, uh, for we're paying for a living, cost of living. We're. Teresa, you're you're in a tough position, and it's probably pretty mm-hmm. scary for you. You're very worried for your 18 year old and what will happen to her and in her mm-hmm. life. My my answer is going to probably sound strange. If you have already clearly stated your position on this, which I imagine you've done as a believing mom, you've tried to instill your values in in all of your children. I actually want you to stop talking about it to them and focus instead on building relationship with them. And I think humility is going to be your best bet. I'd actually have you ask your daughters, how has my mothering affected you? What's been frustrating for you or irritating for you? And even, would you tell me how my, my values have affected you, good and bad. I really want to hear from you. Now, this question is incredibly powerful. If you will ask it and then just listen without defending yourself or arguing or correcting them, it's the listening to their experience that will begin to build relationship and trust. I think this is biblically supported as well, that after we have stated our opinion, we've been clear about it, then loving the people is the best way to maintain relationship and influence over time. But it's a hard ask. It is. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. With God's grace, um, I'm sure I can try. I can do that with the help of the Lord. Yeah, a little bit of encouragement. And I'm I, a little encouragement I want to give you is it's not the same situation, but I had a tough situation in our own family where a uh, daughter-in-law was had a very different upbringing than our family and was fearful in many ways and didn't know how to integrate into our family well. And uh, the only thing we did was love her. And she, she came around and she, she found some help in counseling, uh, granted, but we didn't try to beat her over the head with this is the way it's going to be, young lady, or you got to do this, or the Bible says... We just loved her, and she changed. Okay. And so I just want to encourage you that people can change, and love is a key element. And you've planted the seeds that you need to plant. And, and you can really sh- start sharing this load and, and giving a good majority of the load over to God to say, yeah. God, I've done what I can, so now I need to leave some room for your Holy Spirit to work in my daughters because I can't force the change. But show me how to be a, a better channel of your love to them so that that will draw them back into relationship with you, God. The last thing I would do, and I know our time is very short, is I would let God be the bad guy. By that I mean I say to people, this isn't my opinion. This is what the Bible says about these lifestyles, that it is not something he wants us to embark yeah. and head in that direction. 
And I'm simply repeating and sharing what God's Word says. There you go. So that way, I take the pressure off me as, well, you just don't like this or you disagree with it. Yeah. I'm just saying, look, this is God's opinion. Your, your battle's with Him. But I'm going to love you just like you said, Alice and Larry. What a great way Thank to end you, the Teresa. show. Thank you, Teresa. Yeah. If you're holding for the next hour, please hold. We'll come back and to get your call. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live.